Hey everybody, Dr. Sean here. I want to talk to you about a potential really important biomarker. Are you potentially at risk for sudden death? There are not a lot of things you can go to your doctor that would tell you where you could find out how you might die or why you might be especially at risk for sudden death, except for this one particular interesting biomarker. And so I want to get into it and it pertains to the nose. I, I researched it. There's not a lot out there. You got to stick with me on this video to follow it along. But it's such a simple test, and I'm going to investigate this. I'm, I'm talking to other physicians. We're going to study this. And we're going to expose it. It's so simple. You can just track your notes. Go get your old photographs and see what's happening in the past 5, 10, 15, 20 years and see even in one, in months your month your nose can change to see which direction you're going it's an indicator of whether you're heading in the right direction or the wrong direction so we're going to get into it uh, particularly in the association of a sudden death event okay so woke up yesterday saw this in the news about this particular country singer and suddenly died at the age of 37. Now I'm going to tell you, emergency medicine doctor, I was also a coroner or medical examiner for the Commonwealth of Virginia, state of Virginia. And I attended a lot of, uh, uh, I was a medical examiner. I went to scenes of a lot of unattended deaths, okay? And <clears throat> people die in the ER and suddenly it's, it's rare you see somebody in the 30s, a uh, male, almost no, no females, but Males can die in their 30s <clears throat> from heart attacks. And uh, I think we may be under something taking a look at the nose. So I want to share it with you. Cost you nothing. Okay, so stick with this video to, to find out about this particular marker. So woke up 37 years old um, yesterday. This guy is dead. Country singer. Uh, I noticed something right away about his face because, you know, Dr. Sean, he looks at stuff and he studies it. And so I saw this guy's face. And uh, let's look a little closer. <clears throat> See something that bothers you? All right, so I blew, blew up a lot of, there's a lot of photographs of him uh, recently, <clears throat> him and his wife, because they just got married. Uh, so what is it about his face that bothers me so much? So um, what it is, uh, is this huge nose. That is a big nose. I noticed that, and I'm like, <clears throat> was he born with that? I mean, some, some people are born with big noses, <clears throat> but let's take a look. So I asked the question and then I just Googled uh, him at a younger, uh, younger age and look, look at him, uh, a younger um, country singer, uh, Jack Flint in this uh, particular photo shows a much more smaller, narrower nose. So to make this a little bit easier for this video, I put it side by side and let's blow that up so you can see that those noses a little closer. Now there should be no doubt in your mind now that this nose is smaller than that one. I don't know what the time difference, I'm guessing it's around at least 10 years, um, maybe 15 years, but that's a big change for the worse in that face, okay? so. What causes this? It's it's a in my estimation. I'm predicting it's a marker of inflammation, and potentially a marker for sudden death from a heart attack <clears throat> because of the um, inflammation in that face. So let's see what's going on. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Now most faces, most of the photographs just show his face, but this one showed his face and his body. So. What are we looking at here? Okay, yeah, that's a huge gut. Inside that gut is likely a lot of uh, displacement from visceral adipose tissue, visceral fat, and likely causing the, the proverbial dad bod. The dad bod is not cool. I'm just gonna come out and say, if you're a female and you're attracted to the dad bod, something is wrong there. We're, our species is starting to become attracted to disease and, and, and bad things. So. Uh, we, we got to knit that problem in the bud. You want a tight atom that's flat, more like somebody who is absent disease. I normally would point to like 18 year olds and 24 year olds, but it can be a 50 year old or a 60 year old who doesn't have visceral fat and who's never had visceral fat, who's corrected, or maybe really 
they had a long time ago is, is now optimized their health. So you want a flat abdomen like you were younger. All right, so that's an interesting marker. Let's take a look at, at it <clears throat> in one of my clients I work with. Um, I noticed this difference in about four months um, working with him. Um, he originally came in, he had this very big inflamed nose and he got rid of a lot of his visceral fat and did uh, the protocol we developed for the National Science Foundation and uh, worked with me pretty intensely and a huge difference between his nose in this matter of months. And he's clearly heading in the right direction. So you can improve this. It doesn't, uh, it's not permanent. As you get rid of the cause for this, you reverse that particular condition. So here are my own photographs of how um, I have changed <coughs> over the years, over the course of about 34 years, okay? So here I am about 24 years old. Uh, here I am about 48 and here I am today, 59, just me last last time in the gym. So um, you can see uh, one of the interesting things is I go from a pretty narrow nose here, but kind of inflamed face uh, to a much more inflamed face. And my nose is kind of bigger, but then I get <coughs> a, a leaner face. So uh, you do not have to go through your lifetime developing a big nose. It's not true as you age that your nose gets bigger. What is true as you age, it's likely you accumulate disease and that causes your nose to get bigger. But it's not definitive, it doesn't have to be that way. So get rid of disease and you can keep your face from becoming inflamed, your nose from becoming inflamed, and you may just save your life from having a heart attack. So here's a little closer, you can see the big difference between these two. I uh, wanted to blow that up a little bit bigger so you can see that um, my face has definitely uh, gotten more lean and less inflamed. I'll try to slide out here so you can see the much more inflamed looking face and how much more leaner I am today, okay? So um, it, it, it may not show up that good in the YouTube video. It shows up great on my, my iPhone and my photographs, but when I post these photographs in YouTube, oftentimes the re resolution changes. So. Hopefully you can see at least the outline. Now, <clears throat> not just your face that gets leaner, your whole body will improve, okay? So get rid of that visceral fat, which I think is a crucial biomarker, a marker to follow, a biometric even, because you can quantify visceral fat and you can see that improvement. So I go from this guy who had a lot of visceral fat and suffering from the ravages of visceral fat, the influence of it, to this guy here who's optimized as is optimized, I'm completely optimized myself yet, but become, you know, through biological optimization, due to my principles, um, you can definitely improve that abdomen. And then <clears throat> let's look at somebody here that's heading in the wrong direction. Okay, this guy's still alive. Hopefully, or maybe you don't recognize who this is, but um, this is Joe Rogan. Okay, so big, big difference in Joe Rogan's nose here when he's younger. Remember mine hasn't changed. I'm 59. I'm older than Joe. Joe, if you know Joe, ask him this. Joe, why are you letting your nose get big? Why are you letting your face get super inflamed? You should return to this look. He, he looks super healthy there. He's really healthy. Poor Joe today doesn't know it. He's got a guy with a Glock that's a 10 millimeter pointing right at him, okay? It's very, very close range. And there's all these handlers around him, all these people, you know, that pr protect him from everything. You know, the got people that are after him for money and influence or whatever. Um, you know, they just, they want to, you know, uh, manipulate you, okay? But they can't see the, the guy with the Glock, okay? Who's getting ready to kill him. And that's the inflammation, visceral fat inside Joe Rogan's abdomen. If you know Joe, warn him about this. You know, somebody get to him and warn him. He gets rid of that visceral fat. If he just learns about visceral fat, Joe, you just read it yourself. Don't listen to other people. You go and research this. You're smart as Hades and you get rid of that visceral fat and you will turn your face back in like this, okay? Remember how uh, I did that in my own face? This is what you need. You need to be able to do, Joe. Go from your inflamed Joe inflammation face with the big nose to a leaner one with, you know, a leaner nose like I got here. So uh, anybody know Joe can influence him, get him to do that. And how do you go about doing it? Okay, so 
on the top of my Instagram account. You go to my Instagram at D-R-S-E-A-N-O-M-A-R-A or my Twitter account. But in my Instagram account, you'll see my strategies pinned to the top. There's like seven pages of what you got to do. But I'm going to summarize it right here. You can screen shoot that so you can you can see what those are. And um, real quick, you want to eat no processed foods, cut out processed foods. Got to cut out completely. And I'll show you in the next slide what happens when you do. And then you want to eat a low carbohydrate diet, paleo, keto, carnivore. Um, I, I think it's possible that you get rid of visceral fat and have low visceral fat and vegans. I just don't have any vegans. Um, that long term, they go get their scans. All sorts of young people will go get their scans because they have no visceral fat because they're young. It's the long term vegans that I really want to study. The only ones I've seen so far have been filled with visceral fat because they eat, they eat so many calories and they have to eat so many carbohydrates <clears throat> to sustain the self of energy that they end up getting very filled with visceral fat. But I'd like to be proved wrong. Come see me uh, or get your own MRI and send it to me because I'm a scientist and love to get those results of long-term vegans. Um, and then you want to optimize your microbiome. You want your nitric oxide. Uh, you're going to optimize your, your oxytocin, your melatonin, mitochondria, uh, your myokines. And how do you do all that? Well, I can't go into the video. I'll do, I'm going to do a series offer course and you can subscribe to it down the road. I'll be offering it for healthcare providers, physicians, PAs, nurse practitioners, and health coaches, and really everybody. So you can learn how to do all this. But how do you get started? Just Google, jump on Google, consider the source. You wanna make sure there's good sources and bad sources. But basically it starts with falling in love and developing a strong interest in these particular areas and read about it. Cause guess what, you're a doctor. He or she doesn't have a love interest in this because they don't use it. They use drugs, things that make money. There's no money to be made in these things because you're going to do it on your own. And that's how you're going to optimize. And the last thing I'll tell you about sodium levels. How do you track your sodium levels? Well, you can track it in your sweat because the salt in your sweat is a good proxy for what your sodium levels are in your serum. So when you're in your sauna or exercising, taste your sweat and see, is it really salty? Drink water. Is it dilute? You got to get more salt into your diet. And you know how to do that? Just ingest salt. <clears throat> All right. So last recommendations about exercise. I know I recommend high intensity exercise. It's maximum intensity exercise. Why? Because it's dose dependent. The more intense you are, the better results. Don't want to get an injury. Don't be so careless. You run so fast or working out so intensely that you get an injury but you really want to be you know, crushing it to, to develop those uh, uh, myokines and black feet and the molecules associated with maximum intensity exercise and heat shock proteins, chaperone proteins, these things that make you awesome, okay? Maximum intensity exercise. Uh, sprinting is my favorite exercise. Another favorite one is fighting, but you know, dangerous, you get a lot of injuries. So I recommend to my client patients working with me, emulate or simulate fighting in your exercise. Max effort push-ups, max effort pull-ups, max effort burpees, max effort weightlifting. You know, sort of like you're fighting, but you know, you're not really doing blows uh, back and forth to somebody else or risking those kind of injuries. And then <clears throat> the sauna, um, cold immersion. So for um, like a cold shower or, or polar bear plunge into a lake or an ice bath. And then sunshine, believe it or not, is um, an optimizing measure because it, it increases your heat shock proteins. And then a favorite one of mine is fasting, particularly extended fasting. So um, huge proponent of it. So uh, I recommend you do it. What happens, let's blow this up so you can see this a little bit better. It's pretty exciting. What happens inside your abdomen when you cut out processed foods, okay? So up here, see all this white stuff and this, this is the abdomen, the belly button, this is your back. So it's a slice right through your abdomen laying on your back. All this white stuff, fat, fat shows up on an MRI as white. So all the white stuff in the middle here, that's visceral fat. And from this scan here at week zero to this scan here at week two, you can see, and you haven't even been in medical school, much less gone to radiology program. But guess what? Right now, you know more about it than a radiologist. 
Because radiologists don't read visceral fat. They look right past it. The stuff that kills you. They look right past it. They don't report it. It's like they're ignoring cancer. Only this doesn't just cause cancer in associated with cancer. It also is associated with sudden death from heart attacks and strokes. And it's a chronic disease. Every form of chronic disease we studied in 6,000 people for the National Science Foundation either went away or improved by getting rid of visceral fat. Don't you want to know about that? Your doctor doesn't want to tell you. The healthcare system doesn't want to tell you. They won't even educate doctors about med students in medical school. There's something really rotten in Denmark. We've got to figure this out. And I'm on a mission to promote awareness of visceral fat. And if you know somebody who's out there representing themselves as promoting uh, health on the internet, Instagram, Twitter, that's great. Ask them, why aren't you talking about visceral fat? What do you know about visceral fat? Are you studying it? Sean O'Meara is promoting it. Why aren't you? Please challenge them. All right. So go from here to look at this. Week 35. They got nothing. What did they do? They just cut out processed foods. That's all they did. Didn't exercise one minute. That's right. That's how much processed foods, when you eliminate from your diet, improves you. This should be, this series of photographs should be taught in every medical school, should be in every doctor's office, in every first grade health class, all the way to high school and in college. So everybody knows how bad processed foods are. Those SOBs out there do not want you to know. Who are they? The processed food industry, the big ones. Hershey, General Foods, General Mills, right here in Minneapolis, where I live. They are really, really bad people. And there might be some good people in there, but what they're doing is promoting this visceral fat through their products to make money off of selling you food that causes you to get disease. So stop buying that crap. Stop eating that crap. Get it the heck out of your house. Get it the heck out of your life and loved one's lives and just eat food in whole form. All right, so I showed you that processed foods, you want to eliminate it. Let's take a look at this particular slide about exercise. Okay, this is my favorite form of exercise, sprinting. So in less than two months, this guy came in with all this visceral fat. We got him to stop running because our protocol says that you can actually get rid of visceral fat faster if you don't do distance running and you do sprinting. So he stopped doing distance running. And in two months, less than two months, he got rid of all this visceral fat and he developed a six pack, grew his muscle. And the only thing he did was he added in sprinting. So sprinting has a fantastic benefit um, to your health. All right. So um, if you um, blow this up so you can see a little bit better. Um, if you improve your health, you know, I, my definition of health is your appearance plus your performance. Okay. Remember how um, the first guy, uh, Jack Flint, the, the country singer, his appearance got worse uh, because his health was declining. And Joe Rogan's appearance is worse because he may not be aware of it, but his health is also declining. It's a marker for health. And there's lots of ways you can take a look at it. First of all, um, visceral fat. Um, unfortunately, um, Joe Rogan's got a lot of visceral fat. He's got that atom for tubing. He doesn't have a lot of... He's done have a lot of sub-Q fat. When he pinches around, he's reassured him, my, my atom's not that bad, I don't have that much fat. Well, inside, he's a topi. Thin outside, fat inside, he's a disaster. Topies, thin outside, fat inside, are at a much higher risk for having a heart attack than people that are really obese outside, lots of fat. Joe would be better off <clears throat> if he had a lot of sub-Q fat. So your appearance is really important. Your muscle tone is your poor and also <clears throat> um, visible pulses. I have visible pulses. When you get rid of visceral fat, your pulses become visible and you know your blood flow is going better. And then your hair. You know, uh, what happened to uh, uh, people that uh, get a lot of visceral fat? They start thinning their hair, okay? And Joe Rogan's hair, poor guy, you know, well, he lost his hair. So, or I don't know, he's, he's shaving it. My guess is he probably lost it from visceral fat. And you know, there is genetic comp component, but you will accelerate hair loss. I'll do a video how much my hair and my legs. I was almost bald by the time you know, I was 55 on my legs. I look like a woman. 
and I got rid of my visceral fat. Now my hair is, where do you see? Stick to you in my next video. Where do you see that? And skin turrets. Lots of ways to, to assess your health by your appearance and your performance. Okay, so my guess is um, Joe Rogan, uh, his performance would be significantly better if you got rid of that visceral fat. And uh, that's it for this video. Um, I hope you like it. If you do, give it a like. Uh, subscribe, hit the subscribe button so you can you know, follow my content when it shows out. And consider passing this on to people to check their noses. Okay, so what do I want you to do? Go to your mirror, check your nose, go to your photo albums, check your photo. One year ago, two years ago, five years ago, 10, 15, 20 years ago, even six months ago, three months ago, you can see these changes. I take photographs of my face and my body every day to track how things are changing because I know AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning in the future are going to be able to do this and you will take a, your photograph, your, you know, when you open up your phone, it's going to take a picture of you and say, yeah, that's you and you get access. And it's also going to say, oh, by the way, Joe, today your nose is worse than it was yesterday. So your six needs to be in the gym doing some sprinting and you got to stop eating processed foods because... We know you did. You got some because look at this face or you didn't sleep or you got stress or you're drinking alcohol. All these different things that contribute to visceral fat cause systemic inflammation. Your phone's going to pick up on it when you can't. Okay, that's the future. You know anybody in Google? You know anybody serious about AI machine learning? Send them my way. I know how. I know what to take a look at. I just need some help with the technology. All right, so share this video with other people. Let them, you know, challenge themselves, take a look at their nose, take a look at their attitude, appearance of their body, and the performance of the body. All right, well, thank you very much. As always, give me some questions, give me some comments, and uh, I look forward to un un producing other videos and content for you to optimize, biologic op optimize. I'm a health and performance optimized physician. If you're super motivated, you want to be the very best in your field, you want to perform better, you need to look better you can consider working with me, but I only work with the most motivated. So if you think you're that, reach me out, reach me through my website, drshawnamayor.com. I'll look forward to sharing more content with you and see you next time. Dr. Shawna.